a, one of your homeworks was a set of multiple choice. And so we're gonna kind of very quickly go through the answers. I'll go through the stimulus here with you so you can see it. And we will talk through uh, why the correct answer was correct. If you didn't do these and you wanna take a minute and go back and do this, stop the video, practice the multiple choice, it's just one set, and then you can see us unpack the right answer. So I'll read through this uh, stimulus with, we can do this together. And this is by Paul Leroy Beaulieu, and he's a French economist, and it's an essay in 1881. And if you remember, that was what we told you yesterday is the first thing you wanna do is really zone in on focus in on what the source of the stimulus is, particularly when it's a text stimulus, it's long like this. So the thesis that the condition of the worker has improved during the last quarter or half century does not require any more proof. What can we say about his leisure? Is the worker of today a greater slave to his work than in the past? The evidence of the facts and figures allows us to give an unequivocal reply. The working day has been reduced to a level that makes it more humane. In the recent past, for we are referring to a situation which existed only 30 or 40 years ago, a working day of 14 or 15 hours was not unusual, both in home-based as well as factory production. Nowadays, the duration of work is not more than 12 hours, and even that is much too long. French law has fixed it at this figure. Swiss law has reduced it to 11 hours. In England, it is down to nine and a half hours, and it is probable soon in the whole of Europe that the effective working day will be reduced to 10 hours or to 60 hours out of the 168 in a week, not through legislation, but at the request of the parties concerned. The facts that we have put together show quite clearly that all classes of nation have participated in the general progress and that the working class has particularly benefited in the triple sense of an improvement in their material well-being, an increase in security, and the growth of leisure. All right, so we move away from the stimulus here, but reminding you that, of course, as you're going to see the question on the screen, you would always also be able to see the stimulus, whether you're looking at the pencil and paper test and it's in front of you, or whether you're doing the digital test, the stimulus will be right there for you to see. So the first question is, the changes in working hours described in the passage are best explained by which of the following developments in the late 19th century? And the right answer here is government and private reforms. So the, uh, the author describes a significant decrease in the length of the average work week for industrial laborers, citing instances from various countries. This, decree, this, this decrease took place as a result of a combination of government regulation, pressure from organized labor, and private initiatives by industrialists. So we're looking at government and private reforms was the right answer there. The second question we gave you was this, the impetus for the labor reforms described by the author are best understood in which of the following political contexts? And the answer was the increasing influence of public opinion and mass political parties. So the author describes reductions in working, er working hours, such reductions were in part, the result of public opinion, mass political parties, this is all from our course and exam description. All right, and the last one is um, the dismissal of legislation as an effective means of changing working conditions is best explained by the continued influence of which of the following in the late 19th century. And we have laissez-faire economic thought. And so we have adherents of laissez-faire economics believe that the free market should be allowed to set wages, prices, and working conditions. They believe that government intervention, such as legislation setting maximum working hours, would lead to distortions in the market and impose unfair costs. Although European governments in the late 19th century began to adopt more interventionist approaches to the economy, many people, such as uh, Bolu, uh, continue to argue for the value of laissez-faire policies. So this is what a typical multiple choice set looks like. Um, giving you some answers that hopefully you went through, you eliminated ones that you knew were wrong, and you were able to reason the best choice. So 